Starting audio log zero zero one. The date is February twelfth, twenty twenty three, and the time is oh one hundred. This is Doctor Smith, and I am starting audio log for SCP dash zero eight seven. Object classification is Euclid. Okay. Really quick, I'm going to go through the case file here before I get started. So for the audio log, I thought I heard something. So whatever it is, it seems to have gotten quiet now. This is an, what appears to be an old, abandoned uh, cement staircase structure of some sort. Um, so it's bound to probably make settling noises. Okay, here we go. Um, so SCP-087 has special containment procedures. It is located on the campus of a redacted statement, but the doorway leading to it is constructed of reinforced steel with an electro-release lock mechanism here. It has been disguised to resemble a janitorial closet consistent with the design of the building. For the audio log, I just want to verify that while I am the case supervisor here for 087, I was brought to the location uh, blindfolded as the whereabouts are supposed to remain redacted or unknown. Um, I was able to verify the design of the door. I was allowed to view it upon entering. The lock mechanism on the doorknob was not released unless there was a certain amount of volts applied in conjunction with turning a key counterclockwise. Um, I did not see how many times the key was turned or how many volts were applied. Now, it says here on the file, the inside of the door is lined with about six centimeters of industrial foam padding. Can neither confirm or deny that statement. Hmm, this is interesting for the audio log. Due to the results of the final exploration, see document 087-4. Just making a note of document 087-4 to review once I get back to the lab. Um, no personnel are permitted to access SCP-087, however, I was able to gain clearance with the last supervisor on staff here. Description. Okay, here we go. So. As I mentioned for the audio log, description of 087 seems to be some kind of cement staircase leading up and down though. Looking down, I'm not able to see a bottom. Seems to go on for quite a while here. Description on file says SCP-087 is an unlit platform staircase. I can verify. It's rather dark in here. My flashlight only illuminates so much. Currently have it looking at file, so not much can be seen at the moment. 
staircase descends on a 30 degree angle for 13 steps before reaching a semicircle platform of approximately 3 meters in diameter. Descent direction rotates 180 degrees at each platform. I can verify that here. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the first set of stairs here. Okay, there's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All right, I can verify that the descending staircase here does in fact have thirteen steps, and the Elevation one, two, three, and I can verify that the staircase above does in fact also have thirteen steps. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do some math to try to get the degrees here as stated. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and measure the descending staircase here. We'll start with the railway right about here. Uh, for the audio log, I thought I heard something again. Making a note to listen to audio recording back at the lab to see if it picked up any of the noises I've been hearing. So I'm just going to go ahead and measure down the railing here. Okay. Good. And get the height and width of each stair here. going to go ahead and write that down and do some quick math here. So, if the length of the railing was at the height of the floor, A 38 degree angle and then it said there's going to be three meters in diameter. When I get to the bottom of this staircase here, I will measure the platform and see if it's three meters in diameter. This scent is about 180 degrees. Okay. Now next here on the file it says SCP-087 Limit subjects to a visual range of approximately 1.5 flights, which I can pretty much verify here that I can only see down about a flight and a half, so that does seem to be correct here. About a flight and a half up as well. The light source is required for any subjects. Exploring SCP-087. And I did bring multiple just in case my battery died here. And there are no lighting fixtures or windows present. Which I can confirm, I'm not seeing any windows or lighting as of yet. The only lighting source that is being lit up at the moment is in fact my flashlight aimed directly at me and the light source that is emanating from my camera. I did bring a camera so I could track any visual sightings as well, which we will get to in a moment here. Now, 
Lighting sources brighter than 75 watts have shown to be ineffective. Oh, that's fascinating. As SCP-087 seems to absorb excess light, which explains why this area seems to be rather dark, and my light source only gets so far. Making a mental note of that here. Now, here's why I brought the camera and would like to verify audio recordings for the audio log. Subjects report audio recordings confirm the distressed vocalizations from what is presumed to be a child between the ages of blank and blank. Now the ages are redacted. I'm not sure if this is unknown information or if it's just too hard to verify the age of said voice of child, but the source of the distress calls is estimated to be located approximately 200 meters below the initial platform. Now looking down here for the camera and audio log. I'm only able to see about a flight and a half down, so as far as I'm concerned, I do not see anything 200 meters below us, though I did hear some sounds here, so I'll have to pay closer attention to see if it's that of a child. My first thought was that it could be wind, maybe, and people were mishearing it. Now, it says any attempt to descend the staircase have failed to bring subjects closer to the source. The depth of the descended calculated from exploration 4. The longest exploration is shown to be far beyond both the possible structure of both the building and geological surroundings. Hmm, so it's supposed to go on for a while. I wonder what this could lead to, maybe like a basement of some sort. At this point it's unknown if 087 has an end point. I don't know if I'll be able to reach that today, considering we've come here rather late, but we will try to descend this staircase for the audio log a bit and see what we see. Now, another reason why I have brought a camera today, for any of those who watch this video footage in the future, SCP-087 has undergone four video recorded explorations by Class D personnel. Now, Class D is obviously below me, so I figured it would be okay for me to go ahead and venture in today. Each subject conducting an exploration has encountered 087-1. And for the camera recording, 0871 appears to be a face with no visible pupils, nostrils, or mouth. The nature of 087-1 is entirely unclear and has been determined that it's not the source of the pleading. Subjects exhibit feelings of intense paranoia and fear when faced with it, but it is undetermined whether said feelings are abnormal or a simple natural reaction. So we'll see if we have any of that to deal with today. Now, there is an addendum on here. It should be noted for the audio log that over a period of two weeks following Expiration 4, which was the longest exploration, Several members of the staff and students from Redacted Campus reported knocking at a variable rate of about 1-2 to two seconds per knock, coming from the interior. The door leading to 087 has been fitted with 6 centimeters of industrial padding. All reports of knocking have ceased, so the padding has supposedly stopped the sounds of the knocking. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. For the audio log, I'm going to go ahead and put on some gloves as to not contaminate any of the samples I'm going to be retrieving today. I'm going to start by retrieving 
a swab off of the railing here on 087. I have brought with me a sterilization liquid. I'm going to place a couple drops on the railing, give it a few seconds, and then use a sterile cotton swab to retrieve sample. So we're just going to mix this up here. Give it a little shake. drops on the railing here. I'm just going to pick up my flashlight since I'm having a hard time seeing and I'm just going to one, two, four, good. And we'll give it a few seconds here. And five. So I'm going to grab my sterile cotton swab here. And for the audio log, there is another cotton swab in the package here. So I may try to retrieve a sample further down as well. Great. So I'm going to attempt to just take a slight sample here. Small little dust sample here, just to make sure that everything is normal in here. Good here. Just gonna make sure I get the top, bottom, and sides of the railing. Perfect. that in the Ziploc bag here. Yeah. Now I'm also going to go ahead and spray a solution that should show me any materials that would be of concern, maybe high levels of a toxin or anything acidic. Based on the color that it turns, I should know more moving forward. So I'm just going to spray this over here on the railing as well. I'm just going to shake it up. And for the video log and audio log, this is going to help us because if there's high levels of a chemical in the air or perhaps on the railing or anything, it could have affected people's senses, maybe hallucinations and stuff like that. So testing to make sure that uh, there wasn't any, any influence or materials in the air that could have caused any of this. So just going to 
gonna give it a couple sprays here so. and on the other railing here but should do it and that should take a couple seconds I'm also going to go ahead and brush that into place here so just make sure I didn't miss a spot brush it all around side and we should give that a couple seconds hmm just gonna spray a little bit more here <sighs> quite not <sighs> hmm <sighs> that's interesting um <laughs> for the audio log and uh, video log uh, it doesn't seem that there was any reaction uh, and I verified I do have the right liquid I'm not sure if it's expired but I would highly doubt that um, so it doesn't seem that there's anything that could be influencing previous specimens or uh, people who've come in contact with 087 okay um well, I think I've done enough testing here. I'm gonna go ahead and try to descend 087 for the audio log and video log here. And um, yeah, maybe we'll take some samples down there. So I'm just going to uh, go ahead and bring the camera here with me. So let's see if we can move here. All right, so I'm descending the staircase here and oh, did this thing shut off? Are you still with me? Okay, good. It seems that uh, the camera may have experienced a little bit of like a battery malfunction or something after descending to this bottom part here. Since it was out for a minute, I will verify I did measure the diameter of the base here. I'm gonna go ahead and descend again and, uh, you know, see how the camera reacts this time. Uh, let's see here. It seems to be... Mm. There we go. Yeah, it seems to keep going in and out. Um, do you hear that? Oh, oh, stay with me. It's gonna move here. Wait. Uh, it, oh, goodness. Chris Cristante, Misfit eighty six, Mitchell Kayser, Ben Ginn, Striker zero two one six. Christian Bremble, would you kindly? John Verdig, Joshua Hoover, Jason Masonet, Dali HBH5, Aria Kitty, Sam Hipwell, Fire Drake 0470, Cobalt Enigma, Apollyon 001, Demon Baby 12, Ethan Jansen, Greg, David McDowell, Michael 379, Wolf's Raid 17, Gray Warden, Glide Fabian, Sleepy Sloth, Mike S, Jeremy Espanol, B. Dominic, 